Assalamu alaikum. In this lecture, I will talk about the three quarter crown, which is a partial coverage crown. The partial veneer crown is a cast metal crown restoration that covers only a part of the clinical crown. Most commonly used type of the partial veneer crown is the three quarter crown. In the three quarter crown, all the tooth surfaces are prepared except the buccal or the labial surface. So, this type of a crown will be less retentive and resistance than full veneer crown. It can be used for anterior or posterior teeth. It can be used as a single restoration or as a retina for short span bridge. The uses of partial veneer crown will be first as a retainer for short span bridge, second as a single restoration, third as a supplant in anterior teeth. The indication of partial crown for the posterior and the anterior teeth will be when I have a sufficient bulk of tooth structure and intact well supported buccal surface and mainly i use the partial vinyl crown as a retainer for fixed partial denture beside that i can use it as a splinting for anterior teeth i mean by the splinting of the anterior teeth when there is a mobility of the anterior teeth due to periodontitis i can use the partial vinyl crown as a splint for them The contraindication of partial veneer crown will be first in short clinical crown. As I mentioned before, we need a sufficient bulk of tooth structure, so I can use it in a short clinical crown. Second, in high care this index patient, because the finishing line will be on the occlusal surface, so I can I can't use it in a high care this index patient. Third. When there is extensive destruction, fourth, poor alignment, fifth, thin teeth as in short clinical crown, second, the long bridge, uh, long span bridge because it is less retentive than a full coverage crown, so I can't use it in a long span bridge, and finally, for non vital teeth as you know that the non-vital teeth will discolored by time so the buccal surface should be covered the advantage of a three-quarter crown will be first conservative of tooth structure second easy excess of the margin third Less enjoyable irritation than complete crown. Fourth, easy escape of cement and good seating. Fifth, electrical pulp test is possible through the buccal surface. Sixth, complete seating of the crown can be easily seen by direct observation. But the disadvantage of a three-fourth crown will be first, it has less retention and resistance than complete cast crown. Second, limited adjustment can be done in the path of a draw. Third, possibility of showing metal, especially in the lower anterior and posterior teeth. Fourth, possibility of recurrent caries more along the cave surface line angle and finally difficulty in a preparation compared to other types of crown restoration the recommended dimension 
for the three quarter crown as you see in this picture for the upper molar will be 1.5 millimeter on the functional cusp and one millimeter or the functional cusp and the occlusal clearance should be 1.5 beside that we need a bevel less than 1.5 millimeter on the facial cusp and this bevel should extend to the lingual embrasure the steps of a preparation on maxillary posterior teeth will be first we start with the occlusal surface preparation a depth orientation groove will be placed on the anatomic ridge and the grooves of occlusal surface using round end taper fissure bear the grooves should extend through occlusal line angle but only with 0.5 millimeter deep to prevent metal display after that we prepare the buccal and palatal cusp following the inclination of the tooth until the depth orientation groove will disappear that we place a white bubble on the functional cusp using the same bear Finally, the occlusal clearance should be checked in centric and eccentric, as you see in this picture. Now we do the axial surface preparation or lingual surface preparation. A three depth orientation group are placed using the same bear, and they should be placed parallel to the long X of the tooth. After that, the remaining tooth structure between these grooves should be removed following the contour of the tooth to obtain a chamfer finishing line that is 0.5 mm suprogingivally. We should extend our preparation interproximally as far as possible to open the contact and we should use a needle point diamond bear to break the contact by moving in up and down motion until the contact will be opened. We can cut inside the marginal ridge leaving a strip of proximal enamel as you see in the, in the picture to protect the adjacent tooth. And keep the bear upright using a swing motion to open the contact and uh, be careful don't cut with the tip of the bear. You should be careful that the medial finishing line should remain out of the side when viewed buccally and we should develop a proximal flare as I pointed uh, in this picture. الأقصد بالبروكسيمال فلير إنه نهاية التحضير اللي يكون قريب على الفيشال سيرفيس يكون التوسر ستركتشر with flaring or bubbling to prevent unsupported enamel structure After I open the contact and do the proximal flare, then I should uh, extend the uh, chamfer finishing line margin interproximal. As a part of proximal reduction and in order to improve retention of the preparation and as a substitution for the uncovered wall, proximal proofs should be placed on each proximal wall. It should be parallel to the long X of the tooth on path of insertion and parallel to each other. بهذه الصورة it's the time to prepare the proximal grooves. Well, the proximal grooves should be parallel to the long X of the tooth and it should be parallel to each other. Beside, it should be parallel to the palatal axial wall.
وبهذه الصورة آه نحدد بقلم الرصاص المنطقة اللي نحط بها البروكسيمال بروكس آه يكون تقريبا آه في منطقة التقاء الميدل والليبيال ثيرد والبروكسيمال جروبز احنا احتاجيناها بالباشل كفرج كرام لانه مثل ما تعرفون انه ليبيال سيرفس منحضري فنحتاج نحط جروب حتى نزيد الريتينشن والريزيستنس فور ذا ريستوريشن نحتاج انه نستخدم الشورت تيبر دايموند بير او كاربايد بير والبير يجب ان يدخل تقريبا كله في البروكسيمال سيرفس 0.5 ملم حتى نحصل ريتينشن او ريزيستنس كافيلر ريستوريشن ويجب انه تنتبهون انه البروكسيمال جروف ما تنتهي بنهايه نهايه ما تنتهي الى الفينيشنج لاين لازم انه يكون اكو مسافه بينها وبين ال finishing line or the margin of the preparation so the base of the group should stop short of the margin as you see in this picture and the requirement of proximal group it should cut to full diameter of carbide bear number 171 to create definite lingual wall Second, it should extend to the full length of proximal wall, but ending about 0.5 mm to the chamfer finishing line. It should be placed as far as facially as possible without undermining facial surface between the middle and labial third. Finally, it should be parallel to the long X of the tooth. So the advantage of the proximal groove will be they increase the retention and resistance also by preventing rotation and they reinforce the margin of the restoration at this area especially besides that they act as a guide during placement. What I'm going to do is proximal groove. أتأكد من the proximal flare. So I should refine the proximal flare. وأستعمل the needle pointed diamond bear to smooth any sharp or point angle. مثل ما تلاحظون بالصورة الأولى إنه دي سوي refine the proximal groove. والصورة تحتها هي صورة تخطيطية وتوضيحية إنه في التحضير فيجر A أنه يوجد proximal groups ولكن بال C أنه أكو proximal flare proximal group و with proximal flare يعني إحنا وخرنا ال unsupport any unsupported or sharp or pointed Beside the proximal groove, we need to make a closal offset. I mean by the closal offset, it's a one millimeter wide groove made on the lingual inclination of the facial cusp. It is a V-shape inverted lie at a uniform distance from a closal finishing line. مثل ما تلاحظون بهذه الصورة إنه بالبير بيرس من الأكلوزال أوفست اللي هي يكون موقعها على اللينجوال إنكلينيشن لل بكل أو فيشيال كاسب ويكون شكلها مثل حرف ال V المقلوب على العموم الأكلوز الأوفست هو كأنما هو توصيل بين ال proximal the two proximal groups. So the advantage of proximal group will be improvement. Of the cast strength, beside it will reinforce the margin of the restoration at this area. بعد ما خل لصنا تحضير السن من ال 
الجهات الثلاثة الميجر والبليتر والدستل يبقانا نحط فينيشينج لاين على البكل سيرفيس so we should put a bevel finishing line with 45 degree on the proximal facial or close facial margin اللي أقصد به إنه مثل ما تلاحظون البير كان بميلان زاوية خمسة وأربعين وأمشي على الأكلوزو فيشال مارجن حتى أرسم لي الفينيشينج لاين دائما أحاول إنه تحضير البكال سيرفيس أو الفينيشينج لاين على البكال سيرفيس يكون as minimum as possible to keep minimum metal display بعد ما كمل التحضير انه اتأكد من البريبريشن مالتي انه اهم شيء الفينيشينج لاين يكون واضح دائر السن عندما انظر الى من جهة الاكلوزة Now I will talk about the three for the crown preparation for the mandibular posterior teeth The preparation will be the same for the maxillary posterior teeth, but there are some differences between upper and lower posterior teeth. And the big and main difference is the position of the finishing line on the facial surface. For the maxillary posterior teeth, the finishing line will terminate near the buccal Closal line angle, while in mandibular posterior teeth, the closal finishing line should be one millimeter gingival to the lower closal contact with the upper teeth. And this is because the buccal cusps in lower posterior teeth are the functional cusps. The second difference is in the upper posterior teeth there should be a closal offset but for the lower posterior teeth there is no offset in a state there is a buccal occlusal shoulder which serves the same purpose as the offset مثل ما تلاحظون بالصور امامكم انه التحضير لل three quarter crown لل posterior mandibular posterior teeth حيشبه المaxillary posterior teeth فقط هو حيكون الفرق بال buccal surface أحتاج إنه أمد أكثر بال upper maxillary teeth انتهى ال preparation مالتنا عند ال occluso buccal line angle closo buccal line angle بينما باللور posterior teeth لا أنا أحتاج إنه أمد 1 mm below the occlusal contact with the upper posterior teeth يعني وان حيصير contact with the opposing tooth أحتاج إنه أمد 1 mm below it ليش دا أحتاج إنه أسوي هذا التحضير وأمد على البكال سيرفيس أحتاج لأنه بال posterior mandibular teeth functional cusp حتكون هي البكال سيرفيس فلهذا يجب انه اني اعطيها تحضير اكثر حتى توفر لي structural durability and restoration لان منطقة الفنكشنال كاست تتعرض الى ستريس اكثر الفرق الثاني انه كنا بالابر posterior تيت نمد ال two proximal groove نمدها بالoclusal offset هنا ما حنحتاج الoclusal offset اللي بدل الoclusal offset عندنا الoclusal buccal shoulder مثل ما تشوفوا بالصورة اللي هو شنو وهذا ال shoulder finishing line أنا رسمته على ال buccal surface وحيعوض لي مكان ال offset ولكن حيدي إنه هذا إنه يظهر معدن بالـ lower 
posterior teeth اكيد اكثر showing of the metal will be more than for the maxillary posterior teeth Now I will talk about the three fourth crown for the maxillary anterior teeth, which is rarely used. The preparation will be uh, first for the lingual surface, and the lingual reduction will be done uh, similar to the, uh, to the other types of the crown. We prepare the cingulum area and then the lingual axial reduction. We should place a lingual incisal bubble using a diamond bell at 45 degree to the path of insertion and this termination should not be extended labial to prevent showing of the metal as you see in the picture the uh, lingual incisal bubble but for the lower Anterior teeth, a reverse bubble is placed on the labial surface. This means that the metal will extend to cover the incisal edge in order to protect the area of unsupported enamel from fracture and to prevent the dislodgement of the crown in the lingual direction. After that, we do proximal reduction similar to full veneer crown beside we need two proximal grooves should be placed at the junction between the labial and middle third of the proximal surface and this proximal groove should be parallel to the incisal two-third of the labial surface not parallel to the long x of the tooth using a carbide fissure bear and uh, this is because we can place the longest groove in this direction for better retention and to avoid overcutting to the labial surface if we do it parallel to the long X of the tooth that may affect on aesthetic. After that, the medial and distal proximal groove should be connected together with a V-shaped groove which is the incisal offset. And the ad advantage of the incisal offset will be to improve the strength of the casting at this area beside reinforcement of the margin by, the con by connecting the two proximal grooves together. So, the main difference between anterior and posterior teeth preparation for three fourth crown is that in the anterior teeth, the retentive groove should be parallel to the incisal two-third of the labial surface while in the posterior teeth the proximal groove should be parallel to the long X of the tooth to get the longest groove for better retention of the crown. I hope you understand the lecture and thank you for your attention.